Here we are. Hi Jude, nice to see you. First one on, this is good. Let's just wait for more folk to hop on. I think I um, pressed the button a moment or so early, which is good. Just wait for some more. Hi Elaine, hi, nice to see you. <coughs> Sazzle Sarah, I don't know you. Welcome, welcome. Always a nice surprise to see new folk or folk, folk you don't um, recognize. So this is nice. So here we are, it's Wednesday evening. Evening prayers, Mary Mags, Torquay. My name is Martin, Martin Harris. Um, I'm one of the members of the congregation here. Hi Pete, nice to see you from South Wales. Oh, sorry, Sazzle Sarah, feeling blue. Okay, we're well, in a good place here tonight. We can pray for you. Okay. So, just wait for some more folk to hop on. Two minutes past nine. So, I don't know how your day's been. I had a great day because I'm a teacher. I broke up last week. So uh, it's really nice today to spend a day. Took my mother-in-law out, um, out onto the Tor Abbey. Uh, showed her all that. We had a picnic by the, they've got all these lovely wildflowers. Um, it's fantastic the way they've, they've planted them up. If you haven't seen it, where they used to have the balloon, uh, they've um, taught the, the um, council have painted, have planted all these wildflowers. My goodness, they're fantastic. They're like the um, uh, Meadow of Remembrance that they have at Rowcroft. Beautiful, all these beautiful um, wildflowers. So let's see who else. Sorry, let's see who. Anne and Keith. Hi. Hilary, this is good. Are you with Virginia? This is good. Hi, Richard, my friend. Good man. Nice to see you. Leslie. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. So I've got my, I've got my uh, simultaneous sip tonight. I always forget it. <coughs> Excuse me. Hi, Leslie, this is good. So just wait for a few more folks to hop on. We're gonna be looking tonight again at a passage from, which is the daily reading from uh, Live in Grace, Walk in Love by Bob Goff. I cannot recommend this, um, this book uh any more than i have already it's, it's it's absolutely fab it's really great bob goff wrote love does and um this is the one i'm reading at the moment everybody always fantastic book oh my goodness you've got to read it really really fab book um i'm a massive philip people who know me know i'm a massive philip yancey fan and for years <laughs> excuse me my favorite book has been what's so amazing about us uh, what's so amazing about grace which incidentally Unleash this company, we are doing another production of that next year at the Little Theatre in June. So we're really excited about that. And that for years has been one of my favourite books. But I have to say that Love Does, oh my goodness, is uh, up there, second place. Really good, really good. So um, I think we'll make a start. So we're going to come to God. Uh, this time, these times are uh, times where we can just draw near to God and uh, just focus on Him. And end the day uh, with the Lord. So we're just going to calm our senses. We're going to breathe deeply. And we're going to centre ourselves on God. And we're going to try and um, close all other distractions and just focus on him. So just breathe deeply. And then breathe out. And then we're just going to come to God. And just come in gratitude perhaps for the many things James, my friend, this is good to see you. Nice to see you, mate. Uh, we're just going to come in gratitude towards uh, towards the Lord and uh, just thank him for the blessings of today. Uh, perhaps if you haven't had a great day, there are still things that we can be thankful for, just for the fact that we know that God loves us, that we're his children, that he cares about us and that he knows us better than we know ourselves. And that uh, whatever we've been through today, uh, whether it's been a good day or a bad day, 
that we have not been alone. So Father, we just come to you now at the end of this day. And Lord, we just thank you for your great mercy to us. Thank you that you call us your children. Thank you that we can come into your presence uh, and know that you love us, that you accept us as, as we are. And that Father God, that you love us. Father, I just thank you for today. Thank you for the, um, I thank you for the blessing of family. I thank you for my mother-in-law. I thank you for my wife. I thank you for a picnic on the seafront. I thank you, for, thank you for those wildflowers. I thank you for the sunshine. I thank you for the many blessings. I thank you for friends that we've seen today. Lord, I just thank you for your many great mercies to us. Uh, Lord, we come to you now and we thank you for your presence with us now. In Jesus' name. Amen. So, guys, we're going to... Um, this is great, James. So we're going to come to uh, the the word, and uh, this is a great this is a great verse. I've always loved this verse so much. It's from one Peter five six to seven. Very very familiar, and uh, it's very short. But oh my goodness, it's packed with such promises. Humble yourself therefore under God's mighty hand, that He may lift you up in due time. Cast all your anxiety on Him because He cares for you. I'm going to read that again. It's really fab verse. And today we're looking, the title of today's reading is what do we do? What we do, sorry, what we do with our lives is a good indicator of where we are in our faith. That actually our faith has got to be uh, the thing that motivates everything that we do. The way we live our life has got to be motivated by our faith. And it says here, humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. Cast all your anxiety on, on him because he cares for you. Sazel, Sarah, I don't know your situation, but, um, you know, this is a great verse. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. You know, we can run around in circles worrying about stuff and having many anxieties. And yet, actually, if we fix our eyes on the Lord, that actually, you know, and fix our eyes on the Lord and know that he's in, in charge, that our lives are in his, his care. That actually that makes a massive difference. So I'm going to read what uh, Bob Goff said, because this is really, really great stuff. Basically, he says this. Um, Musicians play music because they can't help it. The same is true for writers. They write. They get up every morning and regardless of the size of their audience, they put their pens to the paper. Whether they write to move people or write for therapy, they write. The practice of their art makes them artists. And I think that faith works the same way. It's not just a system of doctrines and behaviours or beliefs. It's about what we do with the things we believe. People will figure out what we believe when they see how we live. When we actively care for people who have been handed a difficult life, we show people that love isn't all talk. When we bring peace to heated debates, our truest beliefs about the value and dignity of other people shine through. When we choose to risk a new relationship or a new business, we acknowledge God is in charge of the outcome, not us. There is something infectious about seeing someone captivated by their passions. We see it in musicians and artists. We can do it with our faith. When people see this kind of passion in their lives, they'll see more clearly that God, who created those desires. What we do with our love is where we are in our faith. And um, uh, in the mornings, we've been doing the Lectio uh, 365. And this morning was all about Susanna Wesley, who was the mother of Charles Wesley and John Wesley, who, who you know, who started the massive uh, revival in the 18th century and who set up the Methodist Church. Charles Wesley, of course, famous for um, all the amazing hymns that he wrote. And uh, the whole reading was about this woman, Susanna, and her incredible faith and how her faith impacted uh, the people around her. And she just did it regardless of having 10 kids and you know, being worked off her, you know, socks and all the rest of it. And um, I, when I was uh, listening, when I read that, it reminded me of um, two people of, of really great faith. And that is Gladys Aylward and Jackie Pullinger, because Jack, uh, Gladys Aylward is known as being the one who started the Inland um, Christian Mission in China. And she is probably the most famous uh, Chinese missionary. And yet what pe a lot of people don't know is that she was actually rejected by the in, by the Chinese mission, the mission society that she um, she um, 
uh, applied to and she was rejected and so because she felt such a, a, a strong passion in her heart that she was called to the to go and minister to the Chinese people she was a servant she was a servant like in Downton Abbey in, you know in a big house and she uh, managed to pay her way out to China and she set herself up on her own and God used her same with Jackie Pullinger the thing I love about Jackie Pullinger she was a musician like I am she was a music teacher. She uh, did a music degree in London, and then she felt God was calling to uh, her to um, to go out to Hong Kong uh, as a missionary. Again, she applied to the Missionary Society, and they rejected her. <laughs> and um, she still went because she felt she had to be obedient to God. And um, I can honestly testify that actually in my life, um, you know, I'm I run a theatre company passionate about theatre, passionate about seeing how you know, Christian theatre can really impact people's lives, how it's a great way of bringing uh, churches together. It's a great way of preaching the gospel. And yet, you know, I was in a church where they decided they didn't want to support it and they just uh, said, no, we're not supporting you anymore. And uh, the weird thing was, was when that happened, that is when God started to really bless it. That's when God poured his blessing out on it. And I suppose the point I'm making is that actually, if you have a passion, if you feel that God is calling you to do something specific, to really do something specific, then sometimes you have to forget what people are saying around you. No, it can't be you. You're no good. You're not the person. We don't want you. And you need to humble yourself and say, Lord, if this is me, if this is what you want me to do, I'm going to be obedient, regardless of the noise and the voices around me that are saying, don't do this. And uh, I can honestly testify that in my life, that's been something that has really really um, been true but actually if you feel that God is speaking into your life and saying this is what you should be doing it might be a passion that you have and very often that's the way God works that if you've got a passion for something he will use that passion for his glory then you've got to run with it regardless of what people say and regardless of what people um, you know try and stop you doing I'm a great believer that actually if God speaks into your heart then it's about coming humbly to him and saying, Lord, if this is what you want me to do, just being obedient. And obedience actually is above what man can say, what man would say. Very often in church circles, people will try and stop you doing the very thing that actually perhaps God has called you to do. So um, I would really encourage you tonight, if that is you, if God has called you to something, then you just need to run with it. I want to read that again, this word. It says, humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand. And one day he may lift you up in due time. Isn't that a fantastic promise? You know, if we humble ourselves and we're not looking for praise from man, we're not looking for adoration, we're not looking for acceptance from the world, we're just doing what God has called us to do, then actually, if it's of God, then he will lift us up and he will, he will lift you up in due time and he will bless the work that he's called you to do. Cast all your anxiety onto him because he cares for you. So we're going to pray. Um, I want to pray specifically tonight actually for Angie and Paul Knight. Uh, Angie Knight, Paul Knight is a, a wonderful man in the Bay. He runs the, um, the, the Christmas tree farm. He does a fantastic ministry with um, the a lot of the homeless guys. He picks them up down from the seafront and uh, what he's doing and what he and Angie are doing is amazing. And Angie is at the end of her life she's in hospital and she just has days to live so i really want to pray for these guys today they are just such wonderful uh, amazing christ-like people who uh, do such a, have such an incredible ministry so we're going to draw near to god and we're going to pray for them if you've got something you'd like us to pray for uh, uh, sazzle sarah i don't know what uh, your um what's going on but i want to pray for you as well tonight so father we come to you at the end of this day and lord we uh, bring all our cares and we cast them unto you and we say, thank you, Father, that your word says, cast your burdens unto God because he cares for you. Father, it doesn't matter what we're going through. It doesn't matter what we're facing. Father, we know, Lord, that you are Lord of all our circumstances and that, Father God, that you will protect us. Lord, your Holy Spirit, Lord, surrounds us. Uh, the comforter, the Holy Spirit uh, surrounds us and protects us. Uh, Lord, tonight we just want to bring to you Paul and Angie Knight. Uh, Lord, at this really difficult time, uh, Lord, we just thank you for Angie and we just pray, Father, that, that as she comes into your presence, Lord, in these next few days, that, Father, you would be with Paul and the family, that you would surround them, Father God, 
Lord, that you would just be with that lovely family. Lord, that you would support them and give them your peace. Father God, we come to you at the end of this day and we commit them to you. Uh, Lord Jesus, we thank you for all that they do. Thank you for what they are in the bay and what they stand for and the incredible ministry that they have. And Father, we commit them into your hands tonight. Lord, I want to pray for um, Sazel Sarah. I don't know um, what you're struggling with, but Lord, I pray for Sazel Sarah with Ginny tonight. I pray, Father, that you bless her and that, Lord, she's feeling blue and that, Father God, whatever it is, that you would have your hand upon her and that you would um, lift her out of this sense of feeling low and her mood being blue. Uh, Lord, I pray that you would just uh, show her that you have good plans for her, uh, Lord, that you care for her, and that, Lord, if we cast our burdens unto you, Lord, that uh, you hear and that you care for us. Uh, Father, thank you that we can come at the end of this, of this day, and uh, Lord, know that you love us and that you care for us. Just having a look here to see, decide who we are, servant to the man of God. Yeah, we have. that's a really good thing. We have to decide who we are servant to. Yeah, I'll tell you, um, there's a fantastic Bob Dylan song uh, off the Saved album. It may be the devil or it may be the Lord, but you've got to serve someone. And that actually, our, the choice is ours. We have to choose who we are going to serve. Really sorry to hear that. I went to the Isle of Wight for all night and others. Yeah, Rosie. Yeah. So uh, just remember those guys tonight. Um, we are going to close. Um, I'm conscious these don't have to be long. They just need to be, you know, us coming to the Lord. So we're going to pray a couple of prayers and then we'll, then, we'll, then we'll finish. Merciful Father, we entrust to your unfailing and tender care this night those who are ill or in pain, knowing that whenever danger threatens, your everlasting arms are there to hold us safe. Comfort and heal them and restore them to health and strength through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Father, thank you for this day. Lord, th thank you that tomorrow we may live this day tomorrow to the full, being true to you in every way. Lord Jesus, tomorrow, will you help me to give myself away to others, being kind to everyone I meet? Spirit, help me to love the lost proclaiming Christ in all I do and say. Amen. So let's just close, guys, with uh, the Lord's Prayer, uh, which Jason preached on, on, Monday, on Sunday, which I thought was really powerful. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lord, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. So that's it, guys. Um, I just wanted to say um, on Sunday, there were quite a few people who we, were, we, we had an opportunity to share about our ministry out in Kenya uh, with the Karangweri Humanitarian School. And there were quite a few people who wanted to give. Can I just say, if you want to give for uh, the COVID uh, fund that we're, we're, we're carrying on, we've raised £3,000 so far, please, please, please contact me on Facebook or text me. My number is 07792. 241356. That's 07792 241356 or go on my Facebook page and I will private message you the bank account details, which is the Karangweri Humanitarian School um, um, bank account and that goes straight to Roseanne. So guys, thank you. Uh, thank you for tonight. It's good to see you all. Richard, I can't wait to um, act with you again, my friend. Uh, it's good to see you here uh, on a uh, you know, these prayer times and uh, it's been a blessing. Okay, so guys, hope you have a good day tomorrow and that you sleep well and I'll see you next time. Take care.